All right, welcome back. Today is February 4th, 2018. It's 10.21 a.m. I am giving a book review for Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramhansa Yogananda. Uh, this is a really, really great book. Um, I've read, read, read this thing through and through. I'm pretty much always reading it. I always have a bookmark somewhere. I'll read a little chapter here and there. Uh, I need some inspiration that I cannot get from normal earthlings with mundane lives. This guy, Paramahansa Yogananda, originally born with the name Mukunda, he was, he grew up in India and he was told by uh, elders and wise people around him at his birth that he, from studying his birth chart and other things, it was shown that he would travel to America and teach Americans yoga. And that was like basically the, the point of his birth, according to Lahiri Mashai, who was um, another really enlightened yogi. So this guy was basically responsible for going about uh, spreading the teachings of Kriya Yoga to the West as taught by um, Lahiri Mashai, um, who was taught by Mahavatar Babaji. And um, the Kriya Yoga tradition is this ancient yogic enlightenment tradition that was lost during the Dark Ages, supposedly. Um, and it was uh, slowly brought back and, and revived, we could say, um, in recent times. The reason that this book is really great is because if you've ever wanted to know about yoga philosophy, and if you've ever just wanted to know more about yoga from an actual yogi who grew up in India, in the old India, you know, the old India, this was in, he was, you know, born right at the beginning of this century, the 1900s, I think, I want to say, yeah, he was born like, uh, let me see if it says, it says it in here. Um, well, I don't know how, he was born like right around the turn of the century. Um, so India was a lot different then. And there was much more of a, a lot of things were alive uh, then that aren't maybe quite as alive now. Um, not that there isn't something that you know that there aren't enlightened people um, in India. But furthermore, um, this book just is just a great book to read if you want to know anything about yogic philosophy from an actual yogi. If you want an authentic perspective on things like that, he the fir like the whole first chapter of the book, he just tells stories of like going and visiting saints and mystics and yogis as a kid, um, and so he visits all these crazy saints like the saint with two bodies, the tiger swami. That's one of the best chapters in this book is the tiger swami chapter, where he goes and he meets a swami who has a pet tiger and <laughs> basically has wrestled tigers and he uh, he gives a really amazing discourse about mind and how mind is like the the real muscle that you must develop and uh, he developed his mind to such an extent that he could wrestle tigers but he was really arrogant about it and he wasn't spiritual initially and then he had a really wild experience with fighting a tiger and it kind of uh, changed him and he ended up using his powerful willpower to become a yogi and to get enlightened. So that's just one cool example, but there's like all these awesome examples of yogis who are also well known historically, such as Ananda Mayi Ma, a really powerful uh, female spiritual role model, in my opinion, for women who are watching this. And you, if you want a powerful, positive role model that is a perfect representation of the divine feminine and all these great things, read the chapter on his visit with Ananda Mayi Ma. Um, there's a chapter where he visits with Gandhi. Uh, there, Then there's a lot of stuff where he goes to the West, people he met in the West, Luther Burbank, the famous horticulturalist. Um, I sort of have a horticultural karma myself. I love to garden and things, so I really loved that chapter. Luther Burbank, 
and him had this really, really amazing bond. That's actually who this was dedicated to. And Luther Burbank is actually the person who has created like most of the hybrid varieties that we grow now, like the Burbank potato, um, the russet Burbank potato is like what McDonald's French fries are, are grown from. Um, so he was the one who hybridized like a lot of really special varieties of plants that grew well. And he did it with love and he spoke to the plants. And in this book, it goes into it in depth, but him and Yogananda had this amazing relationship. He actually was able to breed a cactus without thorns, like a spine cactus. He was able to breed one within a few generations without thorns. And he had to do with talking to the plant and telling it, you don't need your thorns anymore. I'm going to take care of you. And that was actually how he went about doing this. Um, it's pretty profound pretty profound stuff. He has just tons of chapters of his, it's basically a lot about his guru training him to become the yogi he was meant to be, to come to the West. And then he includes his time in the West at the end, and he shares stories from that angle, and then even going back to India, and then coming back. So, it's a really amazing book. Um, there's actually a chapter all about astrology in this book. So that's actually... If you're gonna, if you're not gonna read the whole book, you should definitely at least read the chapter "Outwitting the Stars," because his guru Sri Yukteswar was again mainly all about yoga and meditation and kriya yoga. But there was a point in his life when he was staying with him and training with him. He went, "I want you to get this bangle made of these certain metals, and I want you to wear this because you're about to have a health issue come up, and this is gonna minimize it." And he didn't really want to listen to him at first. And there's kind of a really cool story. I won't give it away, but there's a very cool story about that. There's other, a couple other stories about astrology and remedies and, and things that his guru did to heal him or to help him. And the chapter on, astro on outwitting the stars is, a, I guess that was really my introduction to Vedic astrology. I was basically learning Western astrology and I started reading this book because I was told to by someone. And I got really enamored with yogic philosophy. And then reading that chapter like bridged my obsession with psychology and how people work and kind of bridged it into all that and worked really well. What else? Yeah, there's really a lot of really amazing stories in here. A lot of cool pictures too. This chapter, the blissful devotee and his cosmic romance with this um, Master Mahasaya guy right here. Or, or that one, yeah. Um, really, really cool story about that guy and his devotion um, to the goddess. And uh, yeah, you kind of just get like a good uh, sense of how yoga is that she just can't get from a lot of more modern books, in my opinion. Oh, he visits uh, Therese Newman, who's a Catholic stigmatist, um, someone who has experienced stigmata. There's a lot of really cool connections to Christianity and Catholicism because this book was written for Westerners to be able to get uh, introduced into yoga. And it is still the best, ver the best, uh, it's still the best book for that, in my opinion. Written in the 40s, there's still not been a single book that's been better at connecting Westerners to uh, yogic philosophy. So maybe if you're an Indian, you won't find it as interesting. But if you are if you are an American, or if you are in a Western English-speaking part of the world, and you are really into spirituality and meditation or yoga, even just yoga at all, and you have not read this book, in my opinion, you're kind of blowing it. You know, <laughs> like you got to read this book. Um, it's named one of the top 100 spiritual books of the century, you know? It's just really up there. Um, and Yogananda, also from a note astrologically about his chart, Yogananda's got a pretty amazing birth chart, um, and really even down to the Shastriyamsha and the Siddhamsha, it's really amazing. Um, my teacher Ernst has uh, kind of talked about that, so I don't feel like I need to talk about that too much. But, and even just a few months back, there was a debate on gurus, and people were bringing up some different gurus. And, you know, just just using classical techniques, just 
not getting emotional or subjective about it, but just looking at the dignity of a planet like Mars, which is so crucial for what are you going to do with your willpower? Are you going to get liberated or not? Are you really enlightened or not? And just looking at Mars and various gurus' charts, claim, you know, some YouTube gurus who are claimed to be beloved, but then we hear these other sides and other stories that are like really come off phony and even harassing or abusive. Uh, there's been a lot of that going on in the last couple years with Saturn Sagittarius. I've written articles about that. You can read those on my site if you need to. But there, uh, there is an, there are ways you can really look at that, you know, in astrology and see a guru and see whether they're really genuine or not. And Yogananda's chart is just profoundly genuine and amazing. Um, so when I really love an enlightened being, uh, a master that I really love is Mary Baba, and he actually even was asked about Yogananda. People asked him about Yogananda, and he told them Yogananda was spiritually perfect. So that's pretty nice to also have that confirmed from other people. Um, that's the interesting thing is that in this book he goes through all these stories of all these saints, and all their powers. Like there are saints that can create perfumes and smells of any sort. Uh, there are saints that can manifest any sort of thing they want that have reached such a level of meditation to where they're almost more identified with the creator than their body. So they can, just like how energy equals e equals MC squared, they can basically apply that because they're identified with infinite mass of the universe. So they can have infinite energy, essentially, and switch everything around. He actually goes into this in very scientific ways, explaining how miracles are possible in this chapter called The Law of Miracles. So if you've ever been interested in occult phenomena or psychic powers, if it's really true or if not, read that chapter. He explains it in logical Western terms. Too bad a lot of scientists over here don't want to read it. Um, but anyways, he... Uh, he, ex he explains how a lot of these masters have powers. One thing that's really interesting, one little anecdote, is that um, this guy, Roy Jean Davis, he met Yogananda when he was young. Uh, he's a little farm boy in Ohio. He read, his he read this book, and he knew immediately in the 40s, like, I need to, that's my master, I need to go and get to him, that's going to be my teacher. And he did. He did just that. He went about doing it. And... He didn't even really ask Yogananda any questions, but one time they were walking. He spent a lot of time with Yogananda. Um, one time they were walking, and Yogananda asked him, do you have any questions? He replied, and instantly he just had a question. He normally never did. And he thought, when, with your book, Autobiography of Yogi, with all those enlightened be or with all those people and all those yogis, how many of them are fully enlightened? And how many of them are just you know, are not fully there. I don't remember exactly how he expressed it. And he, Yogananda replied really quickly, oh, not many, you know, not very many at all are enlightened. And he sort of further explained to him that, you know, a lot of uh, mystics and people are actually quite satisfied with just the state that they get to and don't get any further and don't fully aspire for like complete enlightenment and completely experiencing the totality of being. Or experiencing that experience that I cannot convey in words. And so Yogananda really galvanized him and really told him, but you will go all the way. Don't look to the right or left, look straight ahead, go all the way. And he really emphasized that. Um, and that's something that I think is just really important when you read uh, a lot of stories about yoga and, and stuff. People can get really caught up in developing psychic abilities and all these things. But that's also like still kind of dealing with the ego in a lot of ways. And so the real masters don't really want to do a miracle or do anything out of the ordinary unless they have to to make you have better faith or believe in something higher. Um, I think that even Jesus like said something about that in the Bible where he was like, if you, he was like, unless, yeah, because it's written in the beginning here. Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe, from the book of John. So that's kind of like the point of this book, is like he doesn't, some people actually totally misunderstood it. There's one people, person that I talked to who just misunderstood it and thought he was trying to like brag about powers and all this cool stuff, and that's how you have to be. It's the exact opposite. The whole point of this book is like to tell you that 
yes, psychic abilities, powers, magic, all this crazy stuff can happen when you tap into your mind and develop it. But the craziest and best thing of all is you realize yourself and you become happy again and you don't feel you need to create anything new because you're already there and you're already enlightened and you just are the self. So that's sort of more of the, the real point of this book, I think, in my opinion. Um, but he had to show signs and wonders so that we would believe. So read this book if you need inspiration, if you need stories and, and, and those things that uh, just do something inwardly with our emotions that enliven us and that kind of reinstall or restore our faith in a higher reality. This is a great book for it, for that sort of thing. So I read it constantly, even though I've already read it. Okay, cool. Um, that's about it. I'll put some new book reviews up. Keep reading. It's not all about YouTube, you guys. Seriously, read. <laughs> read or read even articles or read books, but don't just watch TV. There's a different mental thing that happens when you read and write. Uh, you cognize differently. Okay. Bye, you guys.